This is just a quick sketch of the proof that momentum is conserved. So just a quick reminder, the relationship between a force and an impulse, and if I talk about average forces and finite amounts of time, it's like this. Force could be given or average force could be given by the rate of change in the momentum. Well, that means an impulse or a change in momentum it's given by how much force the object feels multiplied by how long it acts for delta t. Another reminder real quick. Because this is the essence of where momentum conservation comes from. Newton's third law. If two objects are interacting with each other, that means pushing or pulling on each other, then the forces they exert on each other are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So in this picture here, I have A pulling on B, B pulling on A. And this notation here, F A slash B, means the force on A due to B. So I'm going to start by expressing Newton's third law. The force on A due to B must be the vector opposite of the force on B due to A. In other words, a force uh, with the same magnitude but opposite direction. So there's that. Now let's let them pull on each other for a small amount of time, delta t. Then the force on A due to B multiplied by that delta t must be the same thing as the negative of the force on B due to A multiplied by that delta t. But now I know that a force multiplied by the amount of time going by gives me an impulse. So the force on A due to B multiplied by delta T, that's the change in A's momentum. And then I get a minus sign in front of the force on B due to A times delta T, which is the change in B's momentum. And I can start just rearranging things. And I have that the change in A's momentum added to the change in B's momentum must be equal to zero. In other words, the total change in momentum for this system is equal to zero. And I'm going to, manip I'm going to manipulate it a little bit more to clarify that. But maybe you see it already. All right, so I end up with PA final minus PA initial plus PB final minus PB initial equals zero. If I then add the initial components to the other side of the equation and then turn the whole thing around, I have PA initial plus PB initial is equal to PA final plus PB final. And if you want, you could express the left-hand side as the total initial momentum. So I could call it P net initial. The right-hand side is the total final momenta added together. So there it is. It's our second conserved quantity in physics. We already had energy. Now we have momentum. And this is very useful for a case like this where I have a system that's not being messed with from outside. So all the forces here are internal forces. Interaction forces between objects. And so where is momentum conservation useful? It's collisions in particular, because in a collision you have interaction forces between these multiple objects, but nothing tampering with the system from the outside. And these internal forces could be incredibly complex, but we can just sort of wash over that, all of that complexity and just say that the initial momentum must be equal to the final. And that gets a lot of really good problems solved.